Wait a second. What'd you do to the eggs? I put some hot sauce on them. Because I thought they were too runny. Those were my eggs. Well, why are they in my seat? Because I was going to joke with you. Because look, I cooked the eggs just the way you like them. That is perfect eggs for me. But I guess the joke yeah. is on you. Because you're eating eggs with hot sauce. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time I hot sauce Joe's eggs, you'll be alerted uh, to it. I want ketchup on my eggs, not Ew, hot sauce. Ew, ketchup is gross on eggs. So good morning. Good morning. It is Thursday morning. It is. And, uh... Yeah, today's our live stream day. We're going to do this. I had like a bizarre road coughing fit. In the middle of the night. Well, it was really early this morning. And I think it was really just like, Rachel, get up. It's time to get up. And I, I ignored it and just continued coughing. But that was weird because I have been feeling really, really good. Uh-huh. Let me try these eggs. So we're having a little bit of breakfast today. And let's see. Hot sauce is good on eggs. I like hot sauce, but, you know, I like ketchup better. But I wasn't expecting any hot sauce today. <laughs> well, that's what happens. You get, you got tangled in your own joke. Okay, so we're having breakfast, uh, two eggs, two slices of bacon, and then the eggs are just cooked in, like, baking, so in the bacon grease. So what I did was I took all the bacon grease pushed it to the back of the Blackstone down in the thing, and then whatever like residual was left on the top of the pan, that's what we cooked the eggs in. Of course, Redmond salt. I learned from Steve at um, Keto Chow, you take salt, you put it on the pan, then you put your eggs down, then you put more salt on top of it. It makes a huge and difference. And they are perfect. I, I mean, I've always salted eggs, but I never thought about putting the salt on the pan before you put the egg on. Yeah. You and it really like adds it. flavor. Our coffee today, I did not do any coffee in the big pot. First of all, we're running low on that coffee. What? And uh, also, we have a lot of Nespresso pods that are like the 8-ounce cups. And... That's not something we're we not gonna really buy use. those. We, yeah. we ordered a whole bunch to try different flavors when I got Rachel the Nespresso machine, but we're really gonna use it more for espressos and things like that. Right. Both their pods and also refilling our own, like we showed in that video. If you didn't see that video, I'll leave a link over here. So what we did was I got Rachel's drinking chocolate fudge. It's very good. And I run it through twice. And I noticed a lot of people have said that, and I have found the same thing that the, it gives you such a rich, deep coffee. You can really get a good cup of coffee by just running it twice through the same pot. Yeah, no problem. The key to that is you can't open it. So you have to brew the coffee, and then when it's done, Push hit the, the button, button again. again. But if you open it, or if you wait too long... It's going to send it to trash? Well, if you open it, it sends it to trash. Then when you try to put it back in, it creates new holes. And now you're going to end up with grounds in your, in your coffee and everything. But if you wait too long where the machine shuts off, it won't work. Because it's expecting you to open and close it for a new pot. Oh, okay. So you have to like do it right away. Also, a little secret, since you don't use the coffee machine as much as I do. Yeah. Let's say you hit it for a second time. Maybe you just want to top it off. And instead of having two seven ounce cups in your thing, you want to do like a 10 ounce cup. Okay. Uh, you can, while it's brewing, hit the button and again, it'll stop. Oh. So you can like do a top off. Kind and then of thing. stop it. Yeah. Wow. That's uh, kind of cool. And then mine is the vanilla custard. 
And then we, I just put it, I, after we brewed it, I put it into the Vitamix, each one of them individually, because we have two different flavors. And there's just one tablespoon of butter since we didn't cook our eggs in butter. Very nice. So I wanted to talk about the scale today. Okay. Because you're sick. And I assume it's up. Right. And while I know mine is up because this morning I got on the scale. Why did I get on the scale? Because I felt like super inflamed and I was curious. Yeah. Um, and again, it's, it's, I always talk about the scales of the devil. You always talk about the scales of the devil. For me, one of the issues with the scale, and I'm working on my relationship with it, is it never tells me something good. When it tells me that you're low in weight, it's really telling me you can eat more food today. Yeah. Right? You can. There's you, room you, for chaos. Hey, whatever you did yesterday, it's working and plus some. So why don't you have a little bit more? Hey, did you have a little bit too many carbs yesterday? Maybe you had too much cheese. But look, the scale didn't go up. Or even better yet, the scale went down. So you got away with that. So you got away with it. You can have more of that. That's what a low scale number tells me. Maybe it's different for other people, but that's what it tells me. And then if it's up, it tells me I'm a loser. But today I felt really inflamed, so I decided I wanted to get on the scale because I had to do something different yesterday that I haven't done in a long time. What's that? And that is take an anti-inflammatory medicine. So... I took it. I took an anti-inflammatory and I took some ibuprofen because of my shoulder. Because like I pulled some muscles, it really hurt. It got to the point where it was like shooting down my arm, like my biceps. Like today, I'm much better, but it was hurting my biceps and in my forearm, and I couldn't sleep. So I was like, I've got to take something to help with this inflammation, and I did. And now I'm noticing some other inflammation. So like it got rid of the inflammation in my shoulder, but I definitely feel kind of wonky. And I think some of it is from taking that ibuprofen and stuff. So, yeah. and the bottom line is inflammation is water weight. That's, you know, so, you know, I know that there's no way I'm up four pounds. Wow. It's, you know, but, but it's disheartening. It's disheartening, but I can feel it just in my gut. Like my gut is like this hard, thing right now so it's like there's probably gas and inflammation in there and and that's what I want to say is that you know when you eat things if you're not feeling good that all brings inflammation and stress and that can be reflected on the scale not necessarily in fat gain but in water weight and everything else like you're you have you've been good you haven't gotten on the scale but how are you feeling I mean are you feeling puffy? I Are feel you puffy. Bloated? I feel puffy, but I think that's just the inflammation that kind of accompanies being sick as your body is trying to deal with it. And I think the best thing that I can do is continue at least giving my body fuel it can count on. And it doesn't have to do that extra step of trying to make that hard decision of am I a carb-fueled body or am I a fat-fueled body? I think that it's when we're sick and we're most vulnerable because really the scale kicked you when you were down because right. you already are hurting. Right. And then the scale dealt you another blow. Yeah. That even though you know what the truth of what you're seeing is, which mm -hmm. is I didn't actually gain four pounds, but I feel inflammation, but it still messes with you and mm -hmm. your confidence, right? For me, I know that, and I've gotten messages of people going like, you know what, if you're sick, go ahead and chicken noodle soup it. Like, go ahead and give yourself some comfort food. That is not going to help. This would be the one time where you should comfort yourself. It's true comfort. But the problem is, is that I don't think I would be kind to my body if I did that. I don't right. think I'm comforting my body. Right. I may think to myself, wow, this, you know, hot cup of soup with potatoes in it or whatever, maybe what I'm used to when I am sick, but things have changed. So much has changed in my body in the last four years that when it's down, why would I throw another wrench at my body who's already just trying to fight for me and give it something that's really going to confuse it and make it feel more frustrating. Yeah, I mean, we, we say it all the time. If you're sick, 
I, my personal belief, again, not doctors or nurses or health professionals, but my personal belief is the worst thing you can do is start eating a bunch of carbs. If you haven't been eating carbs, especially if you haven't been eating them for a while, you're going to tack on to the fact that you're already not feeling good. You're going to tack on to that, the not feeling good from all of a sudden having a bunch of carbs. Will it probably give you a good mental, like, hey, euphoria? Of course for it a will. Moment. Like, you're going to get that momentary bliss. Like, you talk about the bliss effect that they add into foods, like where they add enough sugar to make you desire it and get that euphoric feeling. You may get that, but quickly after, you're going to get the bloat and the, oh my gosh, my stomach, and oh my gosh, I don't feel good, I gotta go to the bathroom, why am I so groggy? And now you're adding a stress on top of a stress. Yeah. So if you're sick, you know, keep doing what you're doing, Take some time, let your body heal. If you're sick, you don't need to go do a bunch of working out because listen, here's the thing. Being sick is a stress on the body. Yeah, it is. Working out is a stress on the body. We don't need to give ourselves a double stress. Allow your body to heal, but allow your food to heal you. So eat good, wholesome food. You know, it's the same thing where, you know, if you're sick, you don't, if you need medicine, take medicine. Now, here's the great thing is there are some sugar-free options available now for cough syrups and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I try to avoid them, mostly because I just don't like the feeling that I get on them. But if I need them, I'm going to take one, preferably a sugar-free one if I can find it. But I got news to it. If I'm feeling really, really bad and I can't find anything, I may just take a sip of NyQuil. Now, I'm not going to eat a bunch of sugar because NyQuil's already got a bunch of sugar Plenty in it. Plenty of it. So I'm not going to add to it, but I'm going to do what I have to do to make myself feel better. I'm just always going to seek out first, like, the sugar-free options, the low-carb options. Like, you've been doing, like, the sugar-free hauls kind of Lossages. thing when you need them. Yeah, that's sort of been how I've handled it instead of reaching for any type of cough syrup. It's usually just triggered by some sort of a tickle right. in my throat that I really just need some numbing action on. So right. yeah, a sugar-free mints kind of helps. Yeah, I mean, it, are the ingredients in like sugar-free hauls the greatest? No. Probably not, but if it's going to make you feel better, if it's going to get you to, you know, get over the stress of being sick a little bit faster, then have at it. And I know there's probably going to be some comments down there like, that's horrible advice. But you need to take care of you first. If you if you are constantly not feeling good and you're almost like in a depressed state because you're sick, that's just adding another stress to your body. That's adding more chances for you to increase your cortisol. And honestly, the fact that we have stayed beef, butter, bacon, and eggs for the most part during this week while I have Except been sick. Except for you sick, put hot sauce on my thing. I know. I did put some hot sauce on your thing. I, I look at it as mustard. It was a zero carb, no sugar added hot sauce. Um, but my thought is it gave me some power in this week. I had some power. Maybe I couldn't control staying home. I couldn't control that it got sick. I can't control the sneezing and the coughing. That's frustrating to me. But I can control what I put in my body and how I'm trying to fuel myself. And I like that. You know what you're putting in your body tonight? <gasps> Bottom round roast. Nice. So this is from uh, the share beef we bought. Thanks, cow. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to prepare. It's cattle. Not Thanks, cow. Thanks, cattle. Cow is a milk one. Thanks, moo moo baby. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to prepare it and we're going to oven roast this tonight. So a little nice. bit different. We're, we usually cook a bottom round roast on a rotisserie. Uh, but again, we're trying to show some different ways you can do it if you don't have a rotisserie, if you don't have a smoker, if you don't have a barbecue, a sous vide or something like that. So we're going to do it a little different. I haven't done an oven roasted bottom round in a long time. What are you doing? We are going to go on a walk because I know wooded areas that have nobody in them. So we're gonna go for a walk because I think she could just really use a really long walk. She's been such a faithful companion this whole week, but it's also meant she's had to stay home too. So running around in the backyard is not enough exercise for our baby. And even though we've been playing in the pool where we just kind of you know throw stuff and she goes and swims and catches it, I know she's really wanting a long walk. So let's go do it. Rachel is playing Beat Saber. I, I can hear the music. Lying down. 
Are you having fun? I am. I feel like at least I'm moving. I like having a nice sweat going on. I wish I could see inside of your thing, but I have my phone and you can only stream to yours. It's like, it reminds me of like basically jazzercise, but kind of like a nerdy version where you're playing a game. But I love that it's forcing me to move in different directions, whereas sometimes when I have an exercise routine, I just skip that stuff. Like, oh, I don't wanna do that, I wanna move over there. And this is like, you lose. Now, if I lose a game, now it's on. It's like really tapped into my competitive spirit. Okay, change of plans, that's normal with me. Instead of making the bottom round roast today, I think we're just gonna have like hot dogs and chili because we do have a whole bunch of chili. And I wanna try something new with the bottom round roast and that's gonna require me to wait another day. Plus we have our live stream tonight and I wanna make sure that we're gonna be able to have enough time to cook it, enjoy it, and then do the live stream. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and cook up some bacon. Mostly because I wanna have some bacon like just ready to go but also I'm almost out of bacon grease. And so whenever we need bacon grease, we cook it here on the electric black zone because I like how clean it comes out the back. And then we just go ahead and pour it into our bacon container. Take me out to the ball game. <laughs> That's what I feel like is going on here with my, my hot dogs and my chili. Are you eating a container of bacon, sir? That's actually not a bad idea. It's not a bad way to spend a Thursday. So like I said, I changed my mind. Um, it's the time got away from us before I knew it. It was already like two thirty, three o'clock, and I'm like, the roast is gonna take a couple of hours. We have a live stream, and I have a doctor's appointment at five o'clock, which is very odd for a doctor to be making an appointment at five o'clock. Right, usually they're closing up, but maybe they're a late owl. Who knows? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm going to run to the doctor. So I'm not even gonna eat right now because I have to go get in the shower and then leave for the doctor in like the next 25 minutes. Can I just say that my head almost exploded as I realized when I was uh, previewing a video that we have 30,000 subscribers. I know. It happened. I'm so, so thankful. Thank you guys for making this happen. Two Crazy Ketos is just us talking to one another yeah. without you, right. right? It's all the difference in the world. Thank you for sharing your time with us, we really appreciate it. Well, I actually, when I realized that, started thinking, so we were supposed to be at the Tampa RV show. Yeah. And uh, we have, in addition to the 40 packages of Keto Chow giveaway, yes. where there's like one of each flavor of like nine flavors. We had a bunch to hand out in person. Yeah, we had a whole bunch of like chocolate ones that we were gonna just hand out to people when yeah. we were at the Tampa RV show. Just for fun. And then we also had a few strawberries left over and we had a few of the snickerdoodles left over, but we have a whole bunch more yeah. in addition to those 40. So what we started doing is actually going through and breaking them up and I don't even know how many we have. We have a lot, a lot of them. So what we're gonna do with these, we're not giving them away on this video. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to give these packages away where it's some of them are just chocolate and some of them are three or four chocolate with a strawberry and a snickerdoodle. And we're going to give them away during live streams. Yep. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. But more importantly, you're going to need to hit that bell button to be notified when we go live. Because when we give them away during the live streams, you're going to have to be present in the live to win. Right. So it's not going to be a matter of, like, hey, we're gonna give this away during the live stream and you can come back later on and watch it on replay. It's gonna be, we say we're giving it away during the live stream and we're gonna pick the winner from the people who are active in the chat. So make sure you subscribe. As a matter of fact, it's too late for this one, but we're having a live stream tonight and nobody knows we're gonna do that. But we have another live stream on Monday. We have another one next Thursday. So we've got a bunch. So it's not gonna just be one live stream. So make sure you're, clicking that bell button so you're notified when we go live. And if live streams are not your thing, don't worry. There mm -hmm. are still plenty of chances to win. We're giving five winners a shot whenever we say, hey, this is one of the ones. Yep. We'll let you know and there'll be five winners at a time with that. So here's what we got. So while you were gone, you were out for another walk. 
I did some bacon. Number one, so we have some bacon, but also I needed some bacon grease because I'm doing the rib roast with bacon grease. Or not right. the rib roast, the, the bottom round roast with bacon grease. And I used up a lot of it. So I wanted some more bacon grease. And I like collecting the bacon grease on the electric blackstone. Here, I'll give you a piece of bacon. Thank you. Even though there's some in your chili there. I appreciate that. And I'm going to have a piece while I get ready to get in the shower. And what Rachel is eating is two of those Teton hot dogs. Mm. They're so good, super, super clean. They're actually not hot dogs. Really They're good. calling them Polish sausages. They are excellent. But it, it, it's the same thing as far as I'm concerned. And I could eat a hot dog any day of the week. Mm -hmm. Like I never tire of hot dogs because I can eat them with hot dogs and mustard. I like chili on top of them. If we're not just doing beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, I love me some cheesy dogs. I right. just think hot dogs are really versatile. And if it's fancy, like... You know they used to always have like dinner frankfurters, they would call them. I'm up for it. Dinner, breakfast, on the road, whatever. Yeah. So on the hot dogs, we put some of our keto chow chili that I made the other day. And that chili is just beef, pork, bacon, spices, and two scoops of the keto chow Super tomato simple. basil. And then some plain pork rinds that Chris and Miriam had dropped off. They had like extra one. It's one of those big vats, but they're plain, no seasoning on them, cooked in their own fat. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> one of us is having a very hearty breakfast. I'm just not hungry. I, um, I did eat last night, but I didn't turn on the camera or anything because after a live stream, I'm just like done. Yeah, I'm you're just tired. Like done. You know, by the time I sat down, it was like 10 o'clock. So I basically ate the same thing that Rachel ate yesterday, which was two hot dogs with a little bit of our keto chow chili across the top of it. I cooked the hot dogs in the air fryer. And then what I did, I actually put the chili in a bowl. And then I cut the hot dogs up and like kind of mix it in Aww. there. And it almost reminds me of um, more of like those cans of like Chef Boyardee kind of stuff. Where it's just like little chunks of meat and stuff in there. That's so fun. That, that's what I ate for dinner. So I'm not super hungry right now. I'm making eggs. I made eggs in a nest. I actually made them this morning. Mm -hmm. And then Joe heated up some purse bacon for mm -hmm. us. But I wanted two of those. And honestly, for me, I'm finding a big breakfast is my best shot of getting through the whole day without snacking. If mm -hmm. I don't want to snack. If I want to just stay on track... This is a really easy thing because I'm I'm full, but I'm not fat, nasty full where I can't do anything. Right. I feel very fueled. So I got my coffee, and I think we just have a little bit of butter in here, right? Or Actually, you uh, coffee is just one egg a piece. So two eggs in the entire pot. That's it. We try to change it up. You know, like, again, we talk about, like, I think our body likes change. Again, not doctors or nurses or health professionals, but... I, I'm finding that I do better, and, and I think Rachel does better as well, Yeah. when we change things up. Like, not having the same exact thing every day. Like, not having keto chow every day. Not having just bacon and eggs every single day. Yeah, it's weird, but it's true. And also, I find, at least for me, I mean, I know Rachel can eat the same thing every single day for weeks <laughs> on end. But for me, I find changing up what we're eating like instead of just eating burgers every day or instead of just eating chili every day which i absolutely love um changing things up helps me not stray to other stuff especially when you're doing some kind of restrictive things like beef beef like beef butter bacon and egg you know you start to get that feeling of oh it'd be really nice to have this and if we're changing it up, like one day having burgers, one day having hot dogs, one day having chili, one day having a roast, one day having prime rib. You still have something to look forward to. Yeah, it, it makes me not think about, I really want chicken wings. I really want jalapeno poppers, which we have not had in a really we long time. We haven't. Oh my gosh. And I would like to get back to them. So uh, back to my neck thing. So I slept last night and I tried to just take a pillow and like roll it. Right. And jam it under my neck, and I seem to sleep a little bit better. Really? I'm thankful that the guy did put my shoulder back into place more. So, like, look, I can lift it today. Wow. You know, so that, that felt a little bit better. But I'm the more I'm thinking about it, I think what I'm probably going to do is use up the last two sessions that came with my Groupon. Because the bottom line, like 70 bucks for, for three sessions. That's great. And the x-ray. 
um, that's a good deal. But what I'm probably going to do is, I know, I'm, I'm going to get a bunch of hate down below. Try to fix this on my own. I'm gonna, oh, Lord. I'm going to try to fix this on my own. Maybe look for a physical therapist. One of those comments down below may be for me. Right. Well, here's the thing is, is I have a hard time spending $3,000 on a treatment from a chiropractor who says you need to come two to three times a week, every single week for the next three months. And I said to him, like, listen, we travel sometimes. What do I do on the week when I'm gone? He's like, well, then the week before you have to come five or six times. He's like, the most important is to get all the treatments in, in a three month period. Really? And, um, so I just, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money for something that is not a guarantee. I mean, I know nothing in life is a guarantee, but you know, the more I read and research that a lot of it is going to come to do down to exercises, like pulling back on your neck, like using a towel and, and put it under here and try to pull like this for like a minute a day, sleeping with something like that's doing your neck, putting a pillow under my knees, things like that. And I'm going to see if I can relieve some of it that way and maybe find a physical therapist and go more of the medical route over the chiropractor route. I like that. I like no matter what your decision is. At least I know what's going on. That you stick to it. So you, you won't hear boo from me unless I see you doing nothing. If you if I see you doing nothing at all. Well, I gotta do something. You I gotta, gotta do stretches or something, then then I'll leave you alone about it. Yeah, so uh, on the schedule for today, you're resting and relaxing still. Yes. And then- I feel great. Are you? Yeah, I really truly feel awesome. I had a bit of a coughing fit. It's a weird thing. It's almost like an alarm clock. Like that's, three o'clock in the morning. That's. I think it's almost. I'm not. I'm not laying right. So I need to prop up. But I know if I prop up, I'm gonna. Excuse me. Wake up. Right. And I'm not ready to wake up. So I'm just gonna lay there, in the same position and cough. But that's not very like nice to my husband because as soon as I prop up, I'm fine. As right. you well saw because. By the time I'm finally like, fine, I turn the TV on and Joe is up now anyway. Well, I'm a light sleeper. Yeah. Rachel can sleep through anything. I can I'm totally a light sleep sleeper. Anything. And so like she woke up at like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning with a coughing fit, which woke me up. And then I'm like, okay, now I have to go to the restroom. So I go to the restroom and now I'm awake. Up, okay. Because that's my thing. It's like, if I feel I have to go to the restroom at like two 30 in the morning, I do try to resist it Yeah. because the second I get out of bed, <laughs> I'm up I, and I don't want to be up. So now the only way for me to go back to sleep is I know this is horrible. Turn the but TV on. Turn the TV on and see if that'll kind of relax me. And that's what we did. We turned on TV on. We watched like one, one hour show. And then I was able to turn it back off and go back to sleep. And it, it has been weird with us being home this week, sleeping till like eight o'clock. Cause that is definitely not normal for us. But I think it's needed. And we had kind of some plans that maybe we would go camping someplace, get away for a couple days. But honestly, just being home and staying in the bed, I think has been the best medicine for both of us. And I think it was just really needed. I do miss camping. We haven't been camping since the first week of December. And um, there were some campsites in the Keys that popped up this week. But again, we weren't sure how you were feeling because when they popped up, I was still questioning, like, are you going to be okay? It had nothing to do with, like, worrying about somebody else because we'd be in our RV or maybe just going in the water away from everybody. But it was more of, you. I want you to enjoy it. You Thank know, you. there's no reason to drive two and a half hours down to John Penningham State Park park our rig and literally have you, I can't get out of bed. Yeah. That, that was kind of, you know, $35 a night. So what I'm doing now is I'm simply like looking for a campsite within the next couple of weeks. And if something pops up, working around our schedule or something, I'm just going to go. And that's one of the nice things that, that, you know, like working for ourselves for the most part, other than having to be at church on Sunday, I can negotiate my schedule. So instead of cutting on a Tuesday, I can cut on a Thursday and that kind of stuff, especially during the winter. Yeah. But hopefully we'll find something like that. So the only thing I need to do today is since it is Friday and generally there's nobody in the church, uh, I need to go set up the new computer in our elementary room. So I've been, I basically put everything together here, added all the programs and everything. 
but I need to actually go physically do it. And I've been waiting for a time when I know nobody is there. Right. There's just absolutely no one there. So that is the plan for today. And then later on, we're going to make that bottom round roast and we're gonna make it in the oven today. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start preparing the roast. So first thing we need to do is pull it out of the refrigerator and let it come up to room temperature. Now, while it's doing that, we're gonna go ahead and tie this up just so we can get a more even shape. So just use some butcher's string and tie it up as tight as you can, trying to get a nice shape on it. Next thing we're gonna do is take a little bit of bacon grease. You can also use melted butter and just kind of coat the whole thing. You don't need a lot. This is just to kind of get our seasoning to stick on it. Next, we're gonna put some kosher salt over the whole thing. We're using Redmond's. Next, we're going to cover the entire thing with some of the Redmond organic garlic pepper. So now that we got everything all prepared, we're gonna let this sit on the counter for about an hour, try to come up to room temperature. Okay, we're gonna get ready to start cooking this roast. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna preheat our oven to as high as you can get it. I'm gonna put it at 475 degrees. And we're gonna take a cast iron pan and go ahead and stick it in that oven so that the pan gets super hot. Now, if you don't have a cast iron pan, that's okay. You can use a regular casserole dish. Just don't put it in the oven for preheating. You're just gonna put the roast in there and wait until the oven is preheated. Okay, the oven is preheated. The pan's been in there a while. We're gonna go ahead and pull out our cast iron pan without grabbing it, without an oven mitt. We're gonna pull that out right here. Close the oven back up, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the roast, and we're gonna drop it in here and get a sear on it real quick. We're gonna flip it over real quick. To the other side. And now we're gonna turn it so we have fat tap up. And we're gonna put this back into the oven at 475 degrees for about five minutes. Okay, the timer's up. We're gonna go ahead and just pull this and check it real quick. Looking good. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a meat thermometer in here real quick. So this is the meter. If you don't have this, you can use a wired one or you can just come back later and check on an instant probe. And we wanna get it so the tip is about halfway in right into the middle of the roast. And we're going to set the temperature here to 250 degrees. And now we're gonna let it go until we have an internal temperature. For me, 128 degrees. You wanna go about five degrees lower than what you want your final temperature to be. So I like to be somewhere between like 133 to 135 degrees. So we're gonna pull it when we get to an internal temperature of 128. That'll make it medium rare. Okay, let's go ahead and slice this up. One thing I wanted to show you, Here's the grain. Make sure we're slicing against the grain. So you don't want to slice this way because if you slice that way, it's going to be kind of tough to chew. So we want to slice it off of the end. I'm going to actually go ahead and cut it right in the middle. Oh, that looks beautiful. There you go. Let's go ahead and slice them up. I like this nice and thin, as thin as you can get. If you have a meat slicer, that's going to be the best way to do this. That is a perfect medium rare. Absolutely beautiful. Super juicy. I hope you saved me some pan drippings. Don't worry, we got some. Let's go ahead and... This is my favorite part. Mmm. <sighs> It's like a fancy steak. <sighs> Is this the cutest thing ever? Yeah, well, I just bought the bread, the roll mold, the hamburger roll mold, and we turned one of the breads into that. Absolutely perfect. And I figured we're gonna toast it, but I figured you could always make yourself like a little roast beef sandwich if you really wanted to. I love this. This is the perfect burger bun too. Yeah. I love this. So 
Cooking, you know, a, a bottom round roast in the oven is pretty simple. I like it better with a cast iron pan. So again, for me, my favorite is always going to be rotisserie followed up by sous vide, but this is another way you can do it. And you can see it's pretty easy. The best thing to do though is to again, do that whole thing where you put it in the oven at a really high temperature for just four or five minutes. That kind of like sears in all the juices and then we're gonna cook it nice and low, like 200 to 250 degrees. Take your time. A couple things to note that I think I forgot to mention, when you do put it into the oven, fat side up. You want that fat to render down and cover the beef. That's gonna really make it nice and juicy. I mean, you can perfect. see that is a perfect medium rare. The reason you wanna do this in a casserole or in the cast iron is because then you can take the pan drippings, add just mm. a little bit of water, and look at that, you have like a nice little au jus to go over the roast beef. Mm. Let's go ahead and try this. I'm trying it right now. Okay. Oh yeah. Mm. Get another little bite in here with the that juice. That is so good. Mm. That the is pan so drippings good. are awesome. Well, they just add so much flavor to it. Mm. Oh my gosh, yes. And then you can also pile high your sandwich and mm -hmm. pour the sauce over it. I just love this little thing. Well, that is gonna be today's video. We have the weekend coming up. We're gonna take the weekend off of vlogging, but we have lots of stuff going on. Let us know down in the comment section, what is your favorite way to make a roast? Something like a bottom round or a top round. We got another video coming up that you guys are gonna really enjoy. We're going to compare cooking a steak in the Inova Precision Oven, sous vide style, to cooking it with a traditional stick immersion sous vide. That's going to be interesting. I think that's going to be... I'm curious to see which one is better. Really helpful, I think, though, for people that are kind of making a decision on, like, what kind of sous vide works. Yeah. So that's going to be the end of today's video. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we have perfectly cooked meat, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.